Hello, today we're talking about erosion and deposition by wind, ice, and gravity. All right, so erosion by wind. Something such as abraded rock often occurs because of abrasion. We've already talked about abrasion when we were talking about physical or mechanical weathering. So when abrasion occurs, wind blows sand or other particles against the surface and basically wears it down over time, as in this picture. So the wind's blowing these tiny sand particles up against this rock. Over time, what happens? The rock goes from looking like exhibit one to exhibit two, creating and having a polished face, which basically means it's smooth and worn down on one side. This happens in areas where strong winds occur and where sand is often loose, commonly the desert. The surfaces will become smooth and polished over time, not only on individual small rocks, but also on large rock structures. Desert pavement. Deflation is something that occurs because wind removes the top layer of sediment from the soil. Basically in a desert, there's not a lot of trees or shrubs or bushes. And because of that, it's just a wide open plain such as in this picture. Deflation is the movement from the material that would be over on top of this sediment, creating unstable soil. Underlying rocks often get left behind, creating what we would call, quote, a desert pavement. It literally just looks like a bunch of desert pieces of rock laid out kind of like your ground. Desert pavement is made mostly of small pebbles or small broken up pieces of rock. Some rocks like the one in the foreground are a little bit bigger, but often if you notice, they just appear to be smooth and flat across the board. Dunes are also created by erosion by wind because wind slows down when it hits an obstacle. And basically when it hits that obstacle, whatever it hits causes the material or the sediment to be dropped. So anytime a dune is created, you have this object in the middle of the way. And basically the buildup is called a mound and that mound is called a dune. So all the sand that hits it as it's windy drops, creating the dune to get larger in size. The dune's gently sloping side faces the wind. It constantly blows material up that side, but it doesn't always stay on that side. It can move because again, it's often just based with sand. Louse is um, extremely fine material carried by wind over long distances. This can often feel like talcum powder, which is a fancy way of saying baby powder, and deposits are found far from the original source. It is very valuable and it often makes really good soil for growing crops. Erosion by ice. Flowing ice, even though you may not notice it flowing, it is moving. So glaciers are what we're talking about with flowing ice. Glaciers are found on land where temperatures are going to remain frozen or 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below year round. Gravity is going to keep that ice moving downward. Again, you can't see it moving, but it does move over hundreds of years a decent amount. About only a couple of centimeters each year, but over time that adds up quickly. The steeper the slope, the faster it does move. So glaciers are traveling downhill. They're going to cut grooves into rock and basically cause weathering to occur. It's going to basically be in the form of abrasion because the rock and the soil underneath it are going to be weathered down. As the glacier melts, it's going to drop whatever material it was there as well as whatever material it's abrading off the sides into the carried material, which will be known as a glacial drift. Alpine glaciers and continental glaciers are the two main types of glaciers we have. A glacier that forms in a mountainous area where it flows through a V-shaped valley, such as this, here's your V, is going to scrape away at the valley floor and walls that form into a U-shape over time. So basically, it's going to be pointed to begin with and eventually will become more like a bowl-shaped or a U. It can carve out bowl-shaped depressions known as cirques at the head of the valley. It can also create sharp and um, rugged landforms. Continental glaciers, such as the picture in the bottom, are thick sheets of ice that spread over very large areas. They often flatten out and smooth um, the landscape around it. These glaciers are smooth and round exposed rock that are near them and surfaces in a way similar to the way that a bulldozer can often flatten the land that it might come in contact with. Erosion by gravity. We know what goes up must come down, so gravity is literally pulling the material down the hill. So there are slow and fast mass movements. In slow mass movement, we have a few examples. The first one is a creep. Rocks and soil are gonna slowly move down the hill because of gravity. A few things are going to help contribute to this. 
Water that loosens the soil is going to allow the soil to move. This happens more often than not on any just regular hill. It can also happen on mountains, but even a hill in your backyard often has a creep in it. Plants often root and burrow around inside the soil because they want to loosen it because they're either creating their habitat or they're looking for food. And then the third thing um, is those plants. Those plants are gonna be rooted down as well. And because of that, it's gonna also help loosen the soil. So anytime you look at a hill and a slope and you notice something like an, a J-shaped tree trunk, that's caused solely by the creep. It's the change in the actual landform itself. Or you may notice that this looks like it's sideways. Originally, it was standing up just like you might have in your backyard, but over time, it does change its location shape. Rapid mass movement, or fast or quick mass movement, is a little bit different. It's also caused by gravity, but it happens very suddenly. The first one is a rock fall, such as in the top picture. Loose rocks fall down a steep slope. Whether that's a hill or a mountain, it can be either one. Basically, it can be triggered by an earthquake. It can be triggered by a multitude of reasons but the rocks literally slide down the slope. The second one is a landslide. It's not just rocks moving, but literally the whole side of some structure giving way. So it's the sudden movement of a large amount of material down a slope or downhill. It can carry with it plants, animals, vehicles, buildings, anything that's in its path is going to go with it when it slides. Chances are increased when you have something such as deforestation, taking away trees, construction on sloped materials, and then, of course, earthquakes, very commonly earthquakes. The third thing is a mud flow. And basically, large amounts of water mix with soil and rock, and the slippery mud flow goes down the hill. Deforestation often contributes to this problem because when you get rid of trees, trees help create thickness to the soil. And if you have no trees, you often have runny soil. Another type that you might have a mud flow is a specific mud flow caused by a volcano. And that's of, um, going to be because it mixes with ash and it forms what's known as the lahar. The lahar can travel over 80 kilometers per hour. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.